Welcome back to Fox and Friends. Dave Briggs, he's Clayton Moore, she's Allison Camerata. We're going to head to Afghanistan this morning. One of the biggest obstacles in front of the U.S. troops there in Afghanistan is the opium trade. The Taliban is using it to intimidate the population. Yeah. Joining us from Helmand Province is Geraldo Rivera. Good morning to you, uh, Geraldo. Tell us what you've seen during your days there in Afghanistan. Hi, Allison, Dave, and Clayton. Yes, in some ways, the Marines brilliantly executed invasion of Marja. This town in the middle of Helmand Province was the easy part. The hard part now is governing this province, a province, as you suggest, that has become addicted to opium in many, many ways. That is the principal crop that is being grown here. Uh, the Taliban lend the farmers the money. They are indebted to the Taliban. They have to grow the opium. Now the Marines, in their success, are, in a sense, a victim of their success because now the population is, uh, you know, they have these opium fields, and we are tolerating it. We are tolerating the cultivation of the opium because we know that if we were to destroy it now, the population would turn against the Marines and it would be a real security risk. Let me introduce Lieutenant Colonel Brian Christmas. He's the commanding officer of the 3rd Battalion, 6th Marines. Uh, really a, a wonderful group of uh, Marines here. Uh, I know that you care deeply about this, uh, this contradiction, the fact that uh, here you have one of the best fighting forces in the world ever mounted. Uh, and in a sense, uh, you're watching as uh, this opium is being grown. I know it, it grinds at your gut. Uh, how do you deal with it? What are you doing about it? Well, uh, frankly, this is a part of their culture. So uh, while it might grind in my gut, it, it's what they do. Uh, we, we provide them security, we're providing them resources, and we're providing them alternatives. And the alternatives uh, are different crops to grow. They're getting the seed and the fertilizer to do it. Uh, they, can, they can rotate any of their crops uh, that they want. If they want to get rid of their wheat and grow cotton for the winter, they can do that, and we're going to help them do it. Uh, so the same thing goes for the pot. So you think that, uh, you know, we were at the market and everywhere we go, they're selling these little devices. Take a shot at this, Greg. Uh, they're uh, hand-carved. These are the little devices they use to scrape the opium sap off the, uh, off the plant. And I watched as you bought every one that was for sale because you care so deeply. Why did you do that? Uh, well, I'm off the street. The idea is that uh, we don't want to harvest the poppy. We want to, you know, hopefully turn the poppy over and put some wheat, cotton, uh, watermelon, cucumber. Uh, it's all great stuff they grow out here. Uh, we just want to see that, uh, that come to fruition and, and the poppy just to go away. How do you separate the good guys from the bad guys? You know, I watched uh, uh, that uh, checkpoint you had. Uh, you, the cars are out on the road. That's the good news. The bazaars are coming back to life. That's the good news. But I don't know. How in the world do you tell a Taliban from uh, a guy who just lives in the neighborhood? Uh, you don't. They do. And, and I'll tell you, the majority of those people are good people. Um, the, the ones that are bad are, are really bad, and they've convinced some of the good people uh, to be bad and follow that. Uh, bottom line is most of them are on the fence, and it's just a matter of, of showing them the good, showing them the fact that the Jarrell government is here, it's going to make a difference, that we're here to help them with the, that security and those resources, uh, but they're the ones that are going to make the difference. Uh, so uh, there, there are a few bad people, the majority of them are good. But I really, I, I fault the politicians for putting the Marines in this position, uh, you know, where we can't eradicate these, uh, these crops uh, for security reasons, and these, uh, these guys, after winning the war, in a sense, now have to fight uh, this fight. But next year, hopefully it'll be better. I just want to quickly pan around, see some of the 3rd uh, Battalion 6th Marines. There's the master gunnery sergeant. There's the top uh, ranked enlisted man next to him is uh, Captain Black. Uh, he had a visit. Quick, quick, who, who visited here a couple of weeks ago? Prince Charles came down a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the, 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 the Brits like him? I mean, you guys like him? Yeah, it's good that he came out, saw the guys, went out to the, uh, to the props and uh, engaged the guys. That was good. Keep going right. around. So we had a visit uh, from Prince Charles, uh, and the Marines are doing the good thing. Uh, Dave, Clayton, and Allison, back to you guys in New York. Thank you so much, Geraldo. Geraldo. Thanks it's so much. I mean, he just explains it better than we can ever read in any paper what a dilemma it is with we, the opium trade. And yeah, they make so much money off the opium per yard there. They make so much money compared to those yeah. other crops. So it sounds great in theory, and Geraldo says this predicament that these politicians have put these guys in to have to tell them, hey, make a lot less money than the heroin you could be making with right. the poppy. And, and they can't destroy it. Right. What, what a difficult position. All right, in the meantime, I do have your headlines for you. We have